Hello, everyone. It is Mark Berman from TV Media Insights. It is Tuesday, June 26. I would like to welcome you back to our daily video cast. And let's begin today with an item in TV history. On this day in 1975, Sonny and Cher officially divorced. Now, at the time, they had a very popular variety series on CBS. The show went off the air. Sonny did his own show for ABC. Cher came back on CBS. Both of their shows alone flopped. They got back together for a reunion show, Sonny and Cher again. It lasted a year and a half, and that too went off the air. The moral of the story is, once you split up, you are never the same. Let's go to the Daytime Emmy Awards now. The 39th annual festivities aired on Saturday evening on HLN. As you know, people were emailing me right and left, wondering how did it do? Well, let me put this into perspective. There's two ways to look at this. Last year, it aired on CBS. It averaged five and a half million viewers, which was about what it was doing on CBS the year before as well. Now, this was HLN. There was no way it would match what it did on CBS, and it didn't. It averaged 912,000 viewers. While that may not sound significant, it was for HLN. And reading a statement that they sent out, the Daytime Emmy Awards was the most watched, regularly scheduled, non-news broadcast in the cable news network's history. So for HLN, it was significant. They aired it four times as a repeat, so there were five telecasts in total, two million viewers. But that initial telecast, just under one million viewers, 912,000 viewers was a record for HLN, so congratulations to them. And you have to keep in mind, remember this, like when somebody like Oprah, for example, had she decided to keep her talk show intact, and just take it over to own from daytime syndication, she also would have lost a ton of audience. It's just a different ball game on some of these other cable networks. So congratulations to HLN. Very smart move. My suggestion is pick it up again next season and beyond. Now, let's go to the ratings for the opening of the newsroom on HBO. What I like about HBO, they send out press releases, and these are the numbers. They don't spin them. This is what it is. You make your own decisions. And here's what happened. It got off to a respectable start. The newsroom on HBO on Sunday opened up with 2.1 million viewers. Now, to put this in perspective, there have been seven scripted series that have debuted on HBO since 2008. This ranks third on that list. Top rated was Boardwalk Empire in 2010, 4.8 million viewers. Game of Thrones in 2010, 2.2 million. Then you had the newsroom, 2.1 million. When True Blood opened in 2008, 1.4 million. And then you have the number one ladies detective agency, 1.3, and Luck and Treme, 1.1 million each. So I would refer to the newsroom on HBO as a very respectable star. Good star. Okay. That's what happened on HBO. Now let's go to our next item, Paige Davis. Now Paige Davis you will remember as the host of Trading Spaces on TLC, which I, was a show that I really enjoyed. She kind of went away for a while. She now hosts a show on OWN. Apparently, and I didn't even know this until yesterday, I received an email that Paige Davis was involved in some kind of a sex scandal. It wasn't a sex scandal. She got It, it was something to do with some racy pictures. Well, the news is that Paige Davis will be going to Hallmark Channel. She will be co-host of their upcoming lifestyle series, Home and Family, she will be co-hosting with Mark Steinis. And the person that emailed me questioned the validity of Paige Davis going to a family-friendly network like the Hallmark Channel, given she had a racy photo scandal. You know what? So be it. We'll see what happens. Um, I am more interested in the upcoming talk show with Marie Osmond. You can't get cleaner than Marie Osmond. And she'll be on Hallmark Channel this fall, which I'm very excited about. And Home and Style will also be debuting this fall. And apparently there's going to be 44 original weeks of a two-hour block of this show. Keep an eye on that. Over at Ion, and this is a very good idea. Now, Ion is, ba I don't know what Ion is. Is it a cable network? Is it a broadcast network? I don't know what it is. It started out at pa as PAX, morphed into Ion, and there was a time when it was running uh, corny sitcoms like Mama's Family, which I really like. Now it does a lot of off-network procedurals and Canadian dramas. Well, they have announced that WWE Main Event will be airing on ION. They're partnering with the World Wrestling Enterprises for a one-hour weekly, which will feature superstars from 
WWE and uh, Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. So those two shows, it's going to be kind of like an ongoing storyline. This will be on Wednesday evenings. I think this is a very, very good idea because these procedurals on ION skew more mail, and I think this is going to bring more viewers to ION. Very good idea. If you're a fan of Army Wives on Lifetime, it returned after a five-week break on Sunday, 3.3 million viewers at 10 o'clock. That was a 10% increase from the current season average. You know, Army Wives has been Lifetime's big scripted drama for the last number of years, but it's, it, it, it's never really been that big, if you know what I mean. It's not like the kind of a show that gets buzz like you see on HBO or FX or Showtime, but for Lifetime, Army Wives does well. Roseanne. The former sitcom queen will be roasted on Comedy Central. It will air on Sunday, August 12th. I imagine you will be seeing former cast members from her sitcom up there making fun of her. And I think it should be interesting. You know, Roseanne did that pilot for NBC called Downwardly Mobile. And unfortunately, it wasn't picked up by the network. I was hoping it would have been, but it was not. Now, what I like to do is when readers email me with questions or comments, I like to incorporate it into the video cast. So I'm going to read you something that Nate, our favorite blogger, wrote about America's Got Talent. I was not aware of this. So here we go. Fix the glasses. I'm going to read this to you. I was watching tonight's episode of America's Got Talent, meaning that was yesterday, to find out the fate of that soldier who lied about his injuries in combat when he auditioned this season. But as far as I can tell, they never showed or mentioned him. I just wish NBC and America's Got Talent would have come clean about the scandal from the start by booting him out of the competition right away instead of making him just vanish now. The way they handled the situation makes me wonder if there are other scandals behind the scenes at either America's Got Talent or NBC News. You know, interesting observation, Nate. Again, I haven't been following America's Got Talent that closely. But uh, you have a point. But you have to remember something. When you do a reality show like this, or any kind of a competition, the networks love scandals, because scandals bring additional viewers, and it helps the ratings. When everything's hunky-dory, it, you know, it doesn't help those numbers. But you have a very good point. And if anybody has any comments or questions, please email me or go to our Facebook page and make sure you post something, and I will incorporate it into the video cast. And that is our daily video cast from TV Media Insights. I want to thank you for joining me, and I will be back with more news about my favorite medium, television, tomorrow. Signing off, Mark Berman. Audience, please. Here we go. <laughs>